Happy Sunday, everyone, and welcome to our online service. I'm Gloria Diaz, and I'm one of the staff here in Victory Paranaque. Maraming salamat po for tuning in with us today. And of course, we'd like to greet all our Victory Paranaque family a happy third anniversary. Oh, diba? Praise God for this milestone. We'd like to thank all our Victory Group leaders, our volunteers, our youth members, even their seniors and their singles community. And if you're at home with them, sabi mo sa katabi mo, Happy Anniversary! Yes! Praise God for this milestone. Ang bait-bait talaga ni Lord. And even though we've experienced um, great trials and crises this past six months, just like that nga, di ba, kalahati na ng taon. But true enough, there's always something to be grateful for. And there's no other um, best way to express that gratefulness and faithfulness of our Lord through our worship this morning. So why don't we prepare our hearts as we worship God? Lord, thank you so much for this wonderful morning that you've given us, God. Thank you, Lord, for giving us reasons to celebrate, Lord, even in the darkest of times, Lord. Father, we just lift up to you this moment, Lord God, as we worship you, as we praise your name, Lord, be glorified, as we declare you are God, our promise keeper. Let's worship and change. When life is
on, just declare all things are possible in His name.
So before we continue to worship God through our giving, allow me to just share a few announcements for every one of us this coming July. Alright, so on this coming July 7 to 9, we will be having our mid-year prayer and fasting and consecration week where we will talk more about the amazing grace of God. So join us po uh, as we pray for our personal breakthroughs and even for our nation and of the world. If you need your, um, your materials, just check the links below and um, you will you will be able to get your your online manuals for this um, prayer and fasting and you see um victory or every nation really believes in uh, in honoring god and making disciples not just here in our country but even in the world so excited po ako na share sa inyo what god has been doing in the nation of cambodia which started in 2010 and even in the mid midst of pandemic has continuously been thriving to norm to know more about this nation, let's watch this video. I am Doc Demi. I am a cross-cultural missionary here in Cambodia since uh, two, well, 2010. We planted a church, two in Phnom Penh and one in uh, Batambang. From the time I was here, Christianity has been growing that much. And the pandemic hit, everything was actually stand to home. So there is no church meeting at this point in Phnom Penh and uh, in the East, but we all meet online. One testimony of God's goodness is actually we maintain our 80 small group. And some of uh, them are now meeting now because they lightened the restriction. So they are now meeting in restaurant, or some of them in a campus which is still empty. Today, I am having a small group with the nurses. Every morning, I gather the staff 
and pray. And we have some Bible study uh, on certain verses that I know it will help them at even at this time. Sa amin ngayon, yung pandemic, is nothing has changed. Our passion, our determination, alam namin yung reason we are here. Pandemic or not pandemic, the gospel will still continue on. And if uh, some of the teachers that has lost their job, we help one another. Now, you know what? They're selling food. Some of them uh, went into delivery of food uh, system. So the, we are the congregation now. This is more stable, more connected because we help one another. Well, uh, thank you for everything. Although uh, there is some difficulty, it is not that much that we need to be concerned. And uh, we will move on, we will move forward and not shrink back because of the pandemic. Still, the gospel will be preached over this nation. In spite of the pandemic, God's hand is moving mightily in this nation. The situation may be difficult, but it has moved the people in our church to help each other and be closer in fellowship and relationship. Thank you for your prayers and partnership. Together, we will see more nations reached and changed by the gospel. Praise God for what God is doing in Cambodia. Now for our time of giving, let's open our Bibles in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 2-4. to It says here, Out of the most severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able, and even beyond their ability, entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the saints. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for reminding us, Lord, that even in the midst of um, trials and tribulations, Lord God, your people, Lord, in Macedonia were able, Lord, to, to give generously, knowing, Lord God, na ikaw yung unlimited source nila. And I pray, Lord, that just as they've done it before, Lord, we pray that you will also fill our hearts with so much confidence, Lord, and um, security. To, to also be generous in blessing others, helping one another in spite of our circumstances, Lord. Knowing that our hope and, Lord, our supply comes from the unlimited source, which is you. Thank you, God. Bless your people who will be giving, Lord God. Bless them and their families. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Alright. To know more about our online giving, let's watch this video. Good day, everyone. Welcome to our online services. At uh, nagpapasalamat kami na inanyayahan nyo kami na maging parte ng New Linggo. At uh, kung whether you're watching in your mobile phones, uh, in your TV, uh, in your living room, or your laptops, or wherever, uh, it, even in different time zone, morning, afternoon, or evening, we just want to say thank you for allowing us to be part of your Sundays. And we just want to give you an update before we continue with our series, The Gospel Explained, uh, that a lot have happened last week. First, is we've celebrated birthdays. So, okay? nag-birthday po yung 
uh, kapatid ko at tatay ko. And dumating na po ang newborn baby nila, Miss Janet, na pinakakabangan natin, and Pastor JR. So congratulations. Another thing that we've celebrated last week, we continue to reach our campuses in Paranaque. We had a chance to have a, a talk in mental health awareness. And thank you to our volunteers. And let's continue to pray for our students as, uh, ch- who are challenged right now. Pray for our students. Let's continue to change the campus and the world. And lastly, we've celebrated our third year anniversary in our work, in God's work actually, in Paranaque. And di lang kami sa Zoom meeting nakita. Nakita kita na po kami with our face mask on. And oh, it was a fun time together. And just reminiscing what happened, we just want to honor our pastors, our staff, our leadership, our victory group leaders na wala pong sawang sumuporta sa ating gawain dyan sa Paranaque and also our ministry, uh, ministry volunteers gusto namin sabihin na nagpapasalamat kami sa inyo naalala ko yung time na we are working together in a physical location so thank you music team, thank you ushering team, thank you prayer team Thank you, admin. Okay, nag-register tuwing umawag hapon. Our kids, volunteers, we want to appreciate you. Uh, we want to appreciate our technical and stage management. Ayan, taga-click ng keynote natin. Okay, taga ng lyrics. Okay, we just want to say thank you for our, even our uh, comms volunteer na ngayon lang, nagkaroon tayo. <laughs> uh, and also, we are th- very thankful to our ministry partners na patuloy na sumusuporta sa ating gawain sa Paranaque. Let's continue to honor God and make disciples. I can still remember how I adjusted sa Paranaque when it was my first time to be with the team. You know, we came from different locations. We came from Alabang, Santa Rosa, Muntinlupa, uh, Fort, Makati, Tagig, Bikutan. So, sama-sama uh, sa isang team. Imagine that, no? Uh, iba-iba kami ng pinanggalingan, iba-iba kami ng personalities, may mahiyain, merong hindi mahiyain, okay? Meron pong uh, iba rin magtrabaho, iba yung pananaw sa uh, ministry. And it, it was really an amazing time. Uh, at naalala ko na nag a ako na hindi ho madali eh, kasi nga we came from different background. And it's somehow related with what, gonna talk, with what we're about to talk about this uh, day, which is in the context of Romans. So Paul was writing this letter because there were uh, a group of people, the Jewish background, believers, and also the non-Jewish background. So nagkakaroon ng argument na na uh, sino ba talaga yung totoong kristyano? Ano ba talaga yung pagiging kristyano? Yung bang uh, nag sumusunod sa law of Sabbath, sumusunod sa tradition of circumcision? Sino ba talaga? So, Pag-uusapan ho natin yon, And he was explaining this. Imagine this. And, and I was stu- we were studying the text. That he was explaining the gospel in light of a promise. So, that's a hint of what we're going to talk about. So, let's continue. Uh, complete this sentence. Promises are meant to be blank. Let me give you some time. Promises are meant to be blank. Okay? So, if you answered, promises are meant to be broken. Actually, that's one of the uh, initial results when you Google it. Na yung pangako pala ay napapako. And because of that definition, you know, because of our experiences of promises that have been broken in our lives, experiences that we've acquired na maraming pangako na hindi natutupad, Ngayon, yung relationship natin sa ibang tao, nagiging somehow, even us, it affects us. It gives somehow the sense of insecurity na hindi na tayo naniniwala agad. Totoo ba talaga na sinabi niya to? Totoo ba talaga na, ooh, baka salita lang yan? Or, we become too cautious. Maniniwala tayo, pero parang wag muna. Okay, itest natin kung gagawin ba talaga nitong taong to yung sinabi niya. Or lastly, you might fall on this kind of category of people na maaari uh, sawa ka na magtiwala kasi puro na lang salita. And we become independent in our lives. Kaya nga marami ako nakilala, woman hater, man hater. Kasi nga, ang daming pinangako sa kanila, hindi naman natupad. Diba? And 
sometimes because of that mindset, it's now how we respond not just to, our, to the relationships that we have today, but it's how we respond with our relationship with God. We become insecure with God. We become cautious and trusting God. Or we become uh, pers- people who are independent of God. Kaya ko naman yung sarili ko eh. Kaya ko mabuhay mag-isa, mas maganda magtiwala na lang ako sa sarili ko kaysa magtiwala ako sa iba o sa Panginoon. So in line with the gospel, what is really a promise? Ano ba talaga yung pangako? Ano ba talaga yung sa, according to the word of God, what is a promise? A biblical uh, definition and ano ba yung uh, bakit ganito ka-importante yung sabi ni Paul na importante natin to pag-usapan in light with the gospel. You see, we're gonna talk about three things. The one who gave the promise the one who received the promise, and also the nature of the promise. So let's uh, look at the book of Romans 4, 17 to 21. We're going to read it. Grab your Bible. Read this with your family together, with your friends, watching with you. Or if you're alone, okay, God is with you. The Bible says, As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do, that do not exist. And hope he believed against hope that he should become the father of many nations. As he had been told, so shall, of, so shall your offspring be. He did not weaken in faith. He considered his own body which was as good as dead. Since he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb, no unbelief made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your words are true and your word is alive. Lord, I pray even today for those who have promises that have been broken. Lord, I pray, just as you resurrected those dreams and hopes in the lives of your people in the Bible, you're going to resurrect it today. You're going to resurrect that hope. Panginoon, uh, nananawagan po kami sa inyo na mayroong mga tao sa ngayon, even at this moment, uh, nananalangin na may pag-asa pa ba. Panginoon, salamat sa inyo. May pangako kaming pangahawakan at may pag-asa kaming uh, aasahan. Salamat po sa gagawin niyo. Sa pangalan ni Jesus, Amen. Now let's proceed. Paul was talking about the promise given to Abraham. So, ano yung connect nun sa, mga, sa church natin sa uh, Romans at that time? You see, God's promise, okay? God's promise shows His power and character. You know, the promise is as good as the one who made that promise. Sabi doon sa verse 17 and to 18, sabi doon, It was God who made Abraham the father of many nations. It was God in whom he believed. The, sabi doon, It was God who gives life to the dead and calls to existence the things that do not exist. Imagine that. Uh, he, imagine the reality of Abraham. Mamatay na po ang kanyang anak as he sacrificed his son. And he was believing God that even if my son will be dead, his promise, God's promise to me would come to pass as he had been told. So pinanghawakan niya po ang salita ng Panginoon. At nalaman niya na ang Diyos na nagsalita nito, at ang Diyos na nagbikas nito, at ang Diyos na nagpangako nito, ay tutupad sa kanyang pangako. You see, when you look at the Old Testament, God was, the author was saying that there is no other God apart from this God that we are serving. There would be a lot of idols, a lot of beliefs that would exist. But there is only one true God that you could believe in. And this God has power and this God is good in character. And he says in 21, he is fully convinced that God was able. Can you say that? Able, ibig sabihin, kaya ng Panginoon na gawin ang kanyang uh, pinangako. 
Imagine the reality of Abraham it, as it was written there. The reality of Abraham that he was 100 years old. The reality of Abraham's wife na barren yung wife na so impossible magkaanak. But he did not miss the reality of the promise of God. You see, um, naalala ko yung for the past few weeks merong nag-viral na video na, na isang delivery company. I know for some of you, you watched it. Uh, yung nakakat- nakakatuwa po yung response ng mga tao. Because of that, nawalan sila ng tiwala sa pamamaraan ng pag-deliver ng company and it made loss to that company as well. So, the same time, kapag hindi na deliver yung promise na isang tao, nakaka nalulus po natin yung tiwala natin dun sa taong yun. And nagkakaroon tayo ng question mark dun sa kakayanan ng taong yon kakayanan ng company yon o kakayanan ng taong nagbigay ng pangako. And in the reality that we have, you know, you, you just sit and think, what is your reality now? And think about that. Is your reality such an obstacle to you at this very moment? So, inisip ko, ano ba yung reality? Maari, katulad ka ni Abraham. So, maari, hindi ka naman 100 years old. But, you're, but you are waiting for a child. Uh, you and your spouse are waiting for uh, a baby. Maybe your obstacle is your finances. Um, currently, we heard the news. Some of our friends na walang po ng work. Maybe that's your challenge. Now what, Lord? Maybe your reality is applying for a visa or booking a plane ticket kasi laging nakakancel. Maybe your reality is uh, you, you have closed doors. Na, Lord, this season pa ba nagka-closed doors? Your reality is you're having conflict with your parents. You're having conflict with your siblings in your own homes. This is your reality now. And I don't know, when you look at Abraham's life, he did not miss the reality, but he hold on to the promise of God. You know, our God is a God who is able. Our God is a God who is faithful. The same God who can fulfill the promise that he made with Abraham is the same God who could fulfill the promise in your life. And that the promise came to pass para po to prepare the way for our salvation. And the question is, in, in our minds right now, is sometimes, kaya ba ni Lord? Or kung hindi kaya ni Lord, siguro kaya ni Lord for some, pero sa akin hindi. Kasi maybe makasalanan ako and all. Or kaya niya sa buhay ng pastor, kaya sa buhay ng full-time na to. Ako, ordinary yung tao lang. And uh, when you look at Abraham's life, hindi naman sa uh, the one na uh, uh, yung ang tawag dito ay hindi siya yung above all na uh, flawless yung faith niya. Actually, uh, kung kita mo yung buhay ni Abraham, he is also flawed. And maybe you have that kind of feeling na baka hindi matupad yung promise ni God dahil sa buhay ko. You see, God's promise is fulfilled not because of our good works, of our goodness. God's promise is fulfilled based on His goodness. And right now, what is your reality? Is your sense of security being shaken because of the, the reality of life? You know, you might have more doubts. You might have more questions. There, there would be uh, even broken dreams and promises. But you see, God is telling you today that He could fulfill His promise in your life in your family, in your company, in our nation, in our world today, God can fulfill His promise. The next thing about this promise that Paul was talking about is the recipient of the promise. Let me tell you this. Believing God's promise is a faith-building journey. Um, I like the verse that Paul was saying, no unbelief made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong. Can you say strong? Strong in his faith as he gave glory to God. You see, crisis and hardships reveals what we really believe in or who we really believe in. And like any other couple praying for a baby, it's not a one-time event. 
nagagawin nila to. It's not a one-time promise na sasabihin nila ang tagal uh, ang bilis Lord, 'di ba? May times na answer prayer agad but most of the time ang tagal Lord, naghihintay pa rin, single pa rin yung iba sa atin kasama ko doon, 'di ba? Single pa rin ang tagal and you know, it's not an overnight thing. Our faith is not an overnight thing. It, it needs to be tested. And the faith that you need, you see the faith that you need to go is the same faith that you need to stay and wait. Now, maybe for some of us, God is saying, no, anak, maghintay ka lang. Kasi God is really moving in the background. God is really moving and orchestrating something great in the background. And most of the time, maybe you are a person whose faith is about to waver. Kasi nga, ang daming ng... Alam mo yan, minsan, sabi nga na when it rain, it pours. Di ba? Parang... Umulan, tapos may at maya, ang daming problema, nagka-problema ito, na, nagka-problema sa finance, na problema sa pamilya, na problema sa sakit. So, nag, naging patong-patong na, hindi na natin alam ang gagawin. But I like what the Bible says. You could stand in a position that you would be someone whose faith is unwavering. You could be someone who could believe in the promise of God and you could grow in this situation. My prayer is that you are the kind of person that God called that you are growing in faith. You are not wavering like, yeah, you know, wavering, like magical wave, yung paalon-alon. Minsan, okay ka, minsan hindi. You could be consistent in your faith because you understand that, hey, I can be flawed. But there's a perfect God who could fulfill His promises to me. See, God's timing for us is perfect. Imagine kung binigay ni Lord o uh, sinagot na ni Lord agad yung mga bagay-bagay na pinanalangin natin dati. Diba? Parang ini-imagine ko, Lord, kung sinagot mo agad yung ibang panalangin ko, maaari hindi ko binigay yung glory sa'yo. Maaari ang glory pa rin nasa akin. Kasi sinabi ni Abraham doon, He gave glory to God. He gave glory not because ang galing niya, nagka, ah, nagkaroon pa ako ng anak, ang galing ko, ang galing ni Mrs. Pero sabi niya, ang galing ng Panginoon na kayang gumawa nito sa buhay ko, sa buhay ng pamilya ko. Maybe for some of you, you're about to give up. Let me encourage you. It's early to give up. And maybe there are a lot of reasons to give up this season. But let me, one, let me give you one good reason. Our God is a God who is able and is a God who is faithful. And you could hold on to this God. And, alam mo, minsan we are hard, hard on ourselves. Bakit hindi pa ito nangyayari? May mali ba akong nagawa? Maybe you just need to, again, trust God and His Word. O, maaari, may tinuturo nga ang Panginoon sa atin. Pero mas maaari na tinitest niya yung pananampalataya natin. You see, when you see a building, hindi naman, uy, overnight may building na. It takes time. It takes hard work. And same way with our faith with God, it takes obedience. It takes carrying our cross every day. And I want to, again, pray for you, those of you who are about to let go of God's promises. You know, let me encourage you. This season is your breakthrough. Okay? Say that to your friend. Say that to your Victory Group member. This season is your breakthrough. Why? Because not we, not because we are good, because God is good. And lastly, the nature of the promise. You see, God's promise is best understood in a framework of relationship. God's promise is best understood in a framework of relationship. Imagine this. Bakit ba tayo nasasaktan when there are broken promises? Bakit bang ba sakit pag may isang tao na hindi tinupad ang kanyang promise? O yung... Diba parang inisip ko, bakit nga ba? Kasi it's built in relationship. It is built in one party saying to another party, business partners. When uh, one party hindi natupad, parang wat, tapusin na natin yung uh, ugnayan natin. A spouse, di ba kaya minsan uh, nagkakaroon ng miscommunication because of promises na hindi na sabi mo sa vow natin, gagawin mo, maguhugas ka ng pinggan, pero ngayon ako inuutusan mo. Diba? So, parents promising to their children and employees to employers and a lot of things. And, and if you would think about it, bakit ba nagbibigay ng pangako ang isang tao or isang party? Simply because in our world today, it's a transaction. 
na in a negative way to take advantage of someone. Kaya may sinasabi, nag-promise ka, hindi na tupad. It's a prank. It's a scam. Di ba? Na-scam tayo. And, but in a positive note, when somebody proves that this person is able to commit and fulfill this promise, nagtataas po at nagbibuild yung trust natin at tiwala na at mas lumalalim ang relasyon natin. And inisip mo sa relationship natin, bakit ba kailangan to pa rin ng Panginoon ang promise niya? Is he benefiting from his promise to us kapag na-fulfill? Hindi naman. But he is building a relationship with us. Ang nangyayari kapag natutupad yung promise ng Panginoon sa buhay natin, mas napapatunayan natin. Again, hindi kailangan patunayan ng Panginoon ang sarili niya. Tayo, napapatunayan natin na ang Diyos na sinasamba natin ay katiwatiwala. Ang Diyos na sinasamba natin ay Diyos na makapangyarihan at pwede nating ibigay ang buhay natin para sabihin na, ah, tama, tama yung mga salita mo, salita mo at nagkakatotoo. Si trust is a heart decision. It's a willful surrender. Hindi po tayo pinipilit ng Panginoon para pagkatiwalaan natin siya. And same way with marriages. You know, when you look at marriages, walang half-hearted marriages dapat na sinasabi natin, eh, mahal kita, pero, sa isang kondisyon, ito gawin mo. Pero, mahal kita, pero portion lang ng puso ko. Nang magtataka yung partner mo, bakit portion lang, hindi ba pwedeng buo? And, you know, hindi, hindi gusto ng mga spouses yun. Same way with God. Ayaw ni God na half-hearted lang tayo when it comes to serving Him. That is why this promise is very important. And He, he tells you na, you know, in this promise that Paul was saying, no, hindi lang ang gusto niyang ka-relationship si Abraham. Ang promise na to, hindi lang para kay Abraham, para sa mga Israelites, sa mga Jewish people, when Paul was saying this, but even to the non-Jews. It reaches to us even today. That is saying, His promise, in light of the Gospel, in order for you to understand the Gospel, His promise is a relationship with you and me. Imagine this God, good God, a God who made the universe making a way, pursuing us. Minsan nga, tinatamad na tayong manood online. Minsan nga, kung ano na lang pinapanood natin online. Pero He's still making a way to tell us today that, hello, my promise is for you today and for your children and for your children's children. And even if hindi natin tinupad ang promise natin, ang pangako ng Panginoon, tutuparin pa rin niya. At ang prayer ko po today, my prayer is that we will continue to believe God's promise. We will continue to stand in the promise of God in our families, with our friends. You know, when we say words today, it would not be about complaining na ano ba nangyayari sa mundo, but believing and declaring and proclaiming the promises of God in our lives. And we are declaring that over your life as well. This, pers- this perspective that Paul was saying, we can claim this promise of relationship as well. Just like what he was saying in the Roman church, kaya, kaya natin pagkatiwalaan ang promise ng relationship natin sa Panginoon. Only if we believe. You know, sometimes, iniisip ko, ang daming promise ng Panginoon, pero hindi natin alam yun kasi hindi natin pinangahawakan. Hindi natin na-experience kasi hindi natin pinagtitiwalaan ng Panginoon. And I pray for some also na hindi po kayo magsawang magtiwala sa Panginoon. And let me pray for you this afternoon. If you are praying, uh, maybe na hurt kayo, your faith is wounded this season. Uh, let me pray for you, Lord. I pray you rebuild that faith. Lord, I pray for some who have been wounded in this battle. Lord, I pray you refresh them. You reveal to them how you've been faithful in the past. You are going to be faithful now and in the future. Lord, thank you for your promises. You said in your word, your promises are yes and amen. Lord, we believe with your people. Lord, we are excited to hear stories of faith, like stories of Abraham or like stories of Paul as we continue in this season. In Jesus' name, amen. And lastly, when Paul was saying this, you know, hindi dahil sa good works natin, hindi sa tradition na magkakaroon tayo ng relasyon sa Panginoon. He was saying, simply because you are Abraham's seed when you believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ according to His promise. 
You know, He is offering this promise to us only if you believe and if you're ready to claim this promise before anything else. This is very important. The promise of relationship with all of us. Let me pray with you. If you are that person, uh, pray with me. Time to surrender your heart to God. Let's pray. Lord, patawad po sa kasalanang ginawa ko na namuhay ako ng ako lang. At maraming salamat, Panginoon, dahil nabuhay ka, namatay, at nabuhay muli para sa akin. Jesus, tinatanggap kita na bilang Panginoon at agapagligtas ng buhay ko. Salamat po sa kapatawaran at salamat po sa bagong buhay. Maraming salamat po sa mga tao na ipagkakalob niyo sa akin na tutulungan ako sa aking relationship sa inyo, Panginoon. Sa pangalan ni Jesus, Amen and Amen. If you prayed that prayer, we just want to say congratulations. Welcome to God's family. And uh, if you need prayers or if you have answered prayer, just message us. We would appreciate it. And if you want to be connected with our groups, uh, don't hesitate messaging us. So again, thank you for joining our online service. See you next week. Thank you.